The Steam Deck is a Ryzen-based APU. As such, its memory and internal clock speeds must be synchronized for optimal performance. Out of the box, the Steam Deck is downright impressive, but there's more on the table. I do not have graphs, but it's significant. I won't waste your time. I'm new here anyways. Grab a seat. Up first is Doom Eternal. It's extremely optimized. It runs well. Uncapped. It runs 120 to 190 FPS. It depends on the scene. It's about 138 just standing here, looking at that spot. Euro Truck Simulator. It'll eat your free time. In worst case scenario, completely stock. It's about 20 FPS. Most of the time not. GPU scheduling is currently bugged in this game. Set a manual GPU clock of at least a thousand uh, megahertz. Uh, stock plus kind of situation. Install power tools and disable SMT at least until the kernel update from the SteamOS 3.5 update comes out. The L3 cache is currently completely lost on SMT threads when the main thread stops execution currently. So when SteamOS 3.5 launches, uh, you should be able to leave SMT enabled and get even better performance out of this game. But this is not then. This is tested on 3.4.2 or 6. I'm sorry, I actually don't know which, but it's 3.4 based. Currently, with cryo utilities and SMT disabled, 3.5 gigahertz, 30, 40 FPS minimums, you know, runs well. It's 50 plus most of the time when you're not in a town. 60 FPS for the most part when you're out and about. The frame rates are at least consistent wherever they're at. It's just a heavy game sometimes, mostly in the rain. Ooh, the poor AI. And completely normal physics. Totally normal. Control, like Doom, runs well, and it's a buttery 60 FPS experience. Occasional stutters. Uncapped here, it sees average of about 72 FPS. Highs in some places will get higher. It's a very, very optimized, very smooth running game. The lows uncapped are around 60. It shouldn't stutter much. Cyberpunk runs much better than stock with just Cryo Utilities 2 installed. Uh, a totally stock Steam Deck runs with 40 FPS, about average. Here, this is about 50, 55 most of the time. 60 if you're standing still. It'll drop hard in a big gunfight without cryo utilities, especially if you don't have 4 gigs of VRAM minimum set. Overall, the game's playable, especially with cryo utilities 2 installed. Um, the developers have also made a massive amount of optimizations for the Steam Deck. Cryo utilities and the optimizations together made by the devs brings this game from a cinematic experience to a nearly 60 FPS experience, but it's not quite there. You can see here there's there's dips down 44, 47, 50 ish. You know I'm given. I'm moving fast. I'm loading things about as fast as can be, but you know the OS and everything else wise is pretty much as optimized as it'll get, short of well short of overclocking and synchronizing the RAM, eh? GTA 5, multiplayer. To say nothing about the load times. Uh, this game runs consistently, at least. It doesn't really seem to matter race or gunfight or flying a tank. You should expect roughly 30 to 40, 45 FPS. With cryo utilities installed, 45 is more the norm. You might even see 50 in you know, you know, a really light spot, but it's it's not quite a 60 FPS experience, but it, it, it's getting there. Wherever it is, though, it, it's, a, it's a rather consistent experience. The developers here have done some optimizations, but obviously nothing drastic. This game just has such an old engine that it, it literally has issues on four cores. It, it has serious issues on two cores. It like literally will not load the entirety of the map on a two core. So this is a pretty good experience for GTA 5 and multiplayer. Multiplayer is significantly heavier than story. Story will play almost 60.
please do not attempt if you are not 100% sure what you are doing. There is no CMOS battery to pull. I'm going to assume you can format a drive in FAT32 using Rufus to copy over the UMAF files to that USB stick and then boot your Steam Deck up with the volume up button and the power button. Use the boot menu, all that jazz. Do not change anything that you do not 100% understand. I will not buy you a new Steam Deck. Valve will not buy you a new Steam Deck. This is not in the warranty. This is outside of the warranty. Whether they can prove that is beyond the point, but now, with a synchronized, overclocked, and undervolted Steam Deck, let's see. Doom runs even better. Uncapped, it only sees about a 4 FPS gain on average, but with the V-Sync down at 60, it ends up netting a significantly lower power draw that I've seen. You're not pushing the GPU nearly as hard. So, it takes significantly less GPU clock than it did previously to run 60 FPS. It stutters less. Euro Truck Sim, back again. Trial Utilities, Power SMT, Disabling SMT, and an Overclock makes this almost a nearly perfect 60 FPS experience. Only really dropping when you're in a town, or when it's raining. Or, or, or both. Uh, it's not exactly a very optimized game, it's a little bit of an indie title. Um, I would not leave the clock speed up at 4 GHz if you aren't plugged into the wall, however. Um, the power draws a little bit on the nuts side, it's about double. But if you do bring that back down to about 3.5 GHz, the gain is still noticeable, but it's only about 1 or 2 FPS in town. It's just that load times have reduced and there's less stutter. Mostly it's clock speed here. Control, like Doom, again, doesn't see a huge gain. Here, the gain is a just a complete removal of any stutter, uh, changing areas, enemy spawning. This is a buttery smooth gain to begin with. This just makes it better. So, it, it allows you to save battery and run the game a little bit longer. Back in Cyberpunk, we're kind of modding like we're duty now. The cock tease that was 55 FPS average is now more like a 60 FPS average, at least closer. It's still a very heavy game, and even like this, I've seen 22 FPS, you know, as a spike. If you really must have every last drop of FPS, this is still being recorded at performance at SR2. You could still use ultra performance. And this is still at 15 watts. Actually letting it use the 18 watts, it's basically 60 FPS. It's shockingly smooth. This is a remarkably heavy game. And this is amazing to be able to run it on a Steam Deck. Something that you can literally carry around with you. The developers have made great lengths and strides to make this game playable on for just four cores. Up at 18 watts, it, it really is hard to tell sometimes that this isn't a PC in your hand, you know, or being streamed. GTA 5, though, uh, this sees the largest gain of any game tested here that you on screen. While it mostly comes down to the clock speed increase, even limiting the Steam Deck back down to just 3.5 GHz like stock or to save battery, you know, it still sees good FPS gains. This is a nearly uh, 60 FPS experience, and when just walking around sightseeing, it is. And none of this is to go into the emulation performance gains. Breath of the Wild, 60 FPS, almost consistent. For example, uh, I hope you all enjoy the video, and uh, perhaps you even found the information useful. I can do a tutorial on UMAF if it's prudent. I'll see what kind of response I get. After all, I am new here. Do all the usual YouTube things if you like it. I'll see if 
this is a thing for me. Appreciate y'all's time. Thanks for watching.